Hello, my name is Dorothy McFadden, one of the registered dietitians with the bariatric program at St. Luke's Hospital. Today, I am presenting Nutrition 101. To understand nutrition, you need to understand the macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So I'm going to start off talking to you about carbohydrates, which basically is our energy nutrient. Carbohydrates provide an immediate source of energy and four calories per gram. The preferred fuel for your brain, muscles, and other organs, and it provides all the cells of your body with energy to perform all activities of daily living. Um, so you definitely prefer carbohydrate over other sources of fuel. How much carbohydrate do you need? 45 to 55 percent of your total energy intake or calories should come from carbohydrate. The American Diabetes Association recommends a minimum of 130 grams of carbohydrate per day, and the average American consumes over 200 grams of carbohydrate per day. So let's just say if you were eating 1,800 calories, you would eat about 203 grams of carb. If you want a 1,500 calorie, you would eat about 169 grams of carbohydrate. Too much carbohydrate. If you eat too much carbohydrate, it's stored in the liver and muscle cells to be available as energy when the body needs it. The stored carbohydrate is called glycogen. Anything not stored as glycogen is stored as fat. If you have too little carbohydrate, you end up with extreme fatigue, muscle cramps, decreased mental function, or like a mental fog, because the carbs are the body's preferred fuel and also the preferred fuel for the brain. An extreme low carb diet can lead to ketosis and the use of body fat for energy. And the side effects of this can be bad breath, dizziness, weakness, fatigue, lethargy, headaches, and even possible kidney damage if you're eating a high protein diet. Um, with your low carbohydrate diet. Types of carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are what most people will label as bad carbs are found in your processed foods, such as soda, candy, fruit juice, and other sweets. Simple carbohydrates that are good for you include fruit and lactose, and lactose is a simple carbohydrate that's found in nonfat milk. Complex carbohydrates are what people like to call good carbohydrates, should contain at least two grams of fiber per serving. Complex carbohydrates are found in all plant-based foods. They take longer for your body to digest. They're found in whole wheat bread, whole grain pastas, brown rice, beans, and starchy vegetables. And your starchy vegetables include corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, peas, and lima beans. Other sources of carbohydrates, fruit, raw or canned, whole fruit, not fruit juice, whole grains, oatmeal, barley, bulgur, quinoa, Brown rice, whole grain cereals, starchy vegetables, potatoes, peas, corn, and lima beans, and your dairy products, such as non-fat milk, low-fat yogurt, low-fat cheeses. Carbohydrates to limit or avoid, refined sugars, which includes sugary snacks, soda, juices, candy, and dessert items. White flour on labels. It's it's labeled as enriched wheat flour or bleached wheat flour. That means it's been processed and it's white flour. The WHO, the World Health Organization, recommends only 10% of your total calories come from simple carbohydrate. So if you're eating 1,500 calories, 150 calories are simple carbohydrate or only 38 grams. The American Heart Association recommends that women have 100 calories or 6 teaspoons per day, or men have 150 calories or 9 teaspoons of sugar per day as your maximum. The average American eats 400 calories from added sugars per day, 22 teaspoons worth, so much more than the recommendation. Problems associated with increased sugar intake include insulin resistance, Increased caloric intake, increased blood pressure, increased triglycerides or the fat in your blood, decreased intake of calcium, vitamin A, iron, and zinc because those nutrients are being replaced with sugar. Soluble fiber, that's also part of your complex carbohydrates. It helps you absorb water and forms a gel which, which helps you feel full. So when you eat foods with soluble fiber in them, you feel full for longer. It also helps lower your LDL or, or blood cholesterol level, which a lot of people call your bad cholesterol. 
It helps you maintain your blood glucose levels by reducing the rise in blood glucose levels that occur after eating. Because the, absorb the food is absorbed slower, it causes less spikes in blood sugar, so it helps you maintain blood sugar at a more normal level. And some examples of soluble fiber are psyllin, which is commonly found in um, Metamucil, Opran, apples, pears, legumes, and barley. Resistant starch is also a part of fiber that resists digestion in the upper digestive tract, but feeds and stimulates growth of friendly bacteria or probiotics in the lower digestive tract. And these are found in legumes, some fruits, vegetables, seeds, and grains. Resistant starch, such as polydextrose, soluble corn fiber, are sometimes added to foods. Insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber acts like a sponge, and it swells in size, absorbing much more than its weight in water, and provides bulk. It helps speed up the movement of food through the digestive system and reduces the incidence of constipation. Examples include wheat bran, bran cereals, corn bran, some whole wheat foods, vegetables, and fruits. Fat. Believe it or not, fat is an essential nutrient. It helps protect your body organs, such as your heart, liver, and kidneys. It helps to balance your hormones. It helps you preserve your body heat through your subcutaneous fat or the fat under the skin. It's a long-acting fuel source for low-intensity exercise, and it provides fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamin A, D, E, and K. Too much fat in the diet is stored in your fat cells and adipose tissue and increases lipid levels in the blood or fat in your blood. Too little fat can cause hair loss, poor wound healing, poor mental function, fatigue, and skin integrity problems. And fat is very high in calories. It provides nine calories per gram, more than double, more than double the amount of calories of carbohydrate. Types of fat, saturated fat and trans fats. Saturated fat is solid at room temperature. It's found in animal flesh, tropical oils, fried foods, increased LDL cholesterol, and cholesterol. Trans fat is created from unsaturated fats through hydrogenization, which is a chemical process. Um, it's found in stick margarine, shortening, and snack items such as crackers, cookies, and commercial baked goods. Um, and just to, to recap with the trans fat, it, they start out with a healthy oil like corn oil, but they change it chemically to make it solid at room temperature, so it acts like saturated fat and increases LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, and your total cholesterol. Polyunsaturated fatty acids and monounsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs and MUFAs. Polyunsaturated fat are oils such as sunflower, safflower, and corn oil, and they decrease your bad or LDL cholesterol cholesterol and may decrease your HDL or your good cholesterol. Monounsaturated fats, which are oils found in olive oil, canola oil, peanut, decreases the LDL cholesterol. Minimal change in HDL, which is a beneficial effect because the good cholesterol helps prevent heart disease and decreases your total cholesterol. And omega-6 fatty acids. Um, they are highly polyunsaturated and found in soybean, corn, safflower oils, and poultry fat, and these include linoleic acid and arachidonic acid. The optional range of omega-6 to omega-3 is 4 to 1. The average American actually has 10 to 1, so a much higher omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Increased omega-6 leads to inflammation, which can increase the risk of heart disease and allergies. Omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are highly polyunsaturated, and they're found in seafood such as tuna, mackerel, salmon, and in plant sources such as nuts, soy, canola, and flaxseed, and include linoleic acid and EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA assist in the prevention of heart disease, high blood pressure, arthritis, and cancer. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids are also commonly called fish oils because they're found in fatty fish. Sources of fat, high in monounsaturated fats, one serving size would be one-eighth of an avocado, one teaspoon of olive, canola, or peanut oil, eight large olives, half-ounce nuts, two teaspoons tahini paste, one tablespoon sesame seeds. 
Polyunsaturated fats, one teaspoon spread margarine, one teaspoon mayo, one tablespoon low-fat mayo, one teaspoon corn, soybean, safflower, or sunflower oil, one tablespoon of salad dressing, two tablespoons of low-fat salad dressing, or one tablespoon of sunflower seeds. Saturated fat, two teaspoons of whipped butter, one sliced bacon, two tablespoons half and half, one tablespoon cream cheese, one tablespoon sour cream, one teaspoon palm or coconut oil, one teaspoon thick butter, one tablespoon reduced fat butter, or two tablespoons coconut. So what you can see is when you do light or low fat products, you can have more of them. Trans fats are in fried foods, commercially baked goods, and any foods that say in their label hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. How much? The World Health Organization recommends 30% of your total calories to be fat. And you want to limit saturated fat to less than 7% of your total calories, trans fat to less than 1% of your total calories, and cholesterol to less than 300 milligrams per day. So just to kind of show you what this looks like, if you eat 2,000 calories, it would be 64 grams of fat for today, 15.5 as saturated, 2.2 as trans fat. And if you do like a phone app to track your intake, all of this is broken down for you. Protein. Well, as a weight loss surgery patient, you hear a lot about protein. They're the building blocks of the body that make up, that are made up of amino acids. They help build your muscle, hair, skin, blood, and your vital organs. Next to water, protein is the most plentiful of nutrients in your body. 60% is found in your skeletal muscle, and it provides four calories per gram, just like carbohydrate. Protein provides valuable enzymes that regulate your bodily functions. It transports nutrients and oxygens and also wastes throughout the body and out of the body. It builds and maintains lean body mass and provides the immune function. So how much protein do you need? Well, too much protein, excess calories are stored as fat. Increased blood lipids because many protein foods are high in saturated fat and it decreases calcium absorption. Too little protein causes the body to catabolize or eat itself or break down its own muscle. It leads to protein malnutrition, which can lead to hair loss, loss of lean body mass, and decreased immune function. Recommended amounts, 15 to 25% of your total calories, or you can do 0.8 grams to 1.0 gram per kilogram body weight, which is on average 55 to 85 grams per day. Higher amounts are recommended for infants and children and pregnant women because they are growing and in hospital patients with burns and hospital patients with surgery and non-healing wounds and athletes require more protein for building of muscle and prevention of muscle breakdown. Types of protein. Complete protein provides all the essential amino acids or building blocks of protein. Incomplete, incomplete proteins um, do not contain all the essential amino acids are found in seeds, nuts, and legumes. There are nine essential amino acids and 13 non-essential amino acids, and non-essential amino acids can be made by the body. This concludes my presentation of Nutrition 101. Thank you.